Hello everyone, my name is Li Hao. Welcome to another day of Advent of Code 2020. So Advent of Code 2020 is a series of programming challenges on the Advent calendar. And every day you have one challenge, which has part one and part two, so two part challenge. Solving each of the part gives you one gold star. So the aim of this challenge is to get 50 gold stars and you will clear it. Right, so today we're gonna do day 17 which means that if this is your first time watching this video you are missing out a lot um links to all the previous videos are over here please please watch them okay go and watch them and come back on day 17. so today we're going to do day 17. we're going to look at the calendar and let's see what is awaiting for us day 17 Conway cubes. Well, okay, so I guess it's a little bit related to Conway's uh, game of life. So as your flight slowly drifts through the sky, the elves at the mythical information bureau at the North Pole contact you. They like to some help debugging some malfunctioning experimental energy source aboard one of their super secret imaging satellites. Experimental energy source is based on cutting-edge technology, a set of Conway cubes contained in a pocket dimension. When you hear it's having problems, you can't help but agree to take a look. The pocket dimension contains in finite three-dimensional grid. At every integer three-dimensional coordinate, there exists a single cube is either active or inactive. Okay, in the initial states of the pocket dimension, Almost all cubes starts as inactive. The only exception to this is a small flat region of cubes, your puzzle input. Okay, so a cube in this region starts in a specific active or inactive state. Energy source then proceeds to boot up by executing six cycles. Okay, so each cube only ever consider its neighbors, one of the 26 other cubes, where any of their coordinates differ by at most one. So during a cycle, all cubes simultaneously change their states according to the following rules. So if a cube is active and exactly two or three of its neighbors are also active, it remains active or else becomes inactive. Right? If it's inactive, exactly three to make it active or else remains inactive. Okay, so the engineer responsible for this experimental energy source would like to you to simulate the pocket dimension and de determine what the configuration of cubes should be at the end of the six cycle boot process. Okay, so even though pocket dimension is three dimensional, this initial state represents a small two dimensional slice of it. Um, simul simulating a few cycles from this initial state produces the following configurations where the results of the each cycle is shown layer by layer at each z coordinates. So before any cycles, you get Okay, so Z is zero. So Z dimension is zero. You get this initial puzzle. And after one cycle, you have uh, two more layers because you know, like, because uh, it's, it's infinitely expandable in all directions. So um, in Z minus one, uh, probably because of the neighboring cells in the zero layer, um, is active, so it makes it become active. In terms of the active, so expanding in more uh, dimension. And after two cycles, you see that it's also increasing in X and Y coordinates where you have more and more cells turning into um, active, right? So, yeah, and you have even more layers, right? So negative two all the way to two. Okay, and getting more and more. Okay, so after full six cycles, you get 112 cubes left in active state. So we need to sim simulate this cycle and how many cubes are left in active states after six cycles. Okay, so I guess that's it. And let's take a look at the puzzle input. Okay, let's save this as the input and let's move it to... The project seven and I'm gonna code, code day seventeen. 
Okay, so first thing first is gonna read the file content, right? Read file sync day seventeen. Okay, so let's take a look at day seventeen. Okay. Um hum. Okay, so that's eight row eight by eight. Okay, irrelevant tet. Probably we're gonna so so this cube um probably I'm not gonna store it in an array uh because that the each of the dimension is going to increase indefinitely. Right? So uh, probably if I have an array, I probably have to keep increasing the size of the array, um, which may not be that um, efficient. I keep changing the array, mutating the array, adding more rows and cells and stuff. So probably I'm going to do um, by having an active, active set. right? So this set will keep recording uh, what are the cells that are actually active. Um, yeah, right. So I have this and then probably the next thing I'm going to do is that um, I keep track of um, the bounds of this cube right now. So because it's indefinitely increasing, I don't want to loop through, say, uh, maybe I assume that after six cycles, I'm going to be like uh, 20 units wide. I don't feel like I'm going to do it 20 units wide every time in the first cycle. I'm going to increase the bounds, right? Slowly and slowly if necessary, and then loop through more cells if necessary. So what I'm going to do here is going to have uh, variables call uh, x min equals to uh, negative one and that uh, y uh, x max goes to uh, nine uh, sorry eight so what this means is that uh, this over here is indexed from zero all the way to seven because there's um, eight cells right so um, just to be safe, because next cycle I'm going to start with is going to look at whether the index negative one has, will it change to become active, right? So I'm going to look from negative one all the way to eight, index negative one to eight. And um, yeah, and then if necessary, we're going to increase the bound, right? So the same thing happens with uh, Y as well. And the same thing happens with uh, Z as well, but in this case, Z will only be negative one to one, right? Because there's only one layer in the, in the average beginning, right? And after, okay, so next thing you're gonna do is gonna um, look at the contents, right? So we're gonna loop through uh, each of the row, row of content dot split new line cons uh four cons okay how about this I'm gonna uh map i'm gonna call it a map dot split so i'm gonna loop through uh so y is each row right so uh, y equals to zero y less than map dot length y plus plus and x is the cell uh, the column so we're gonna say x goes to map y uh, map okay so if map y x equals to hash which is active then active dot set okay so i'm gonna how do I store like X and Y both in this set? I'm gonna probably gonna concat them, uh, join them in, as a string uh, with comma separate separated them, right? So the initial one is um, Z is at zero, and this is the X, Y, and Z. Okay, so we have a list of active. 
um, make it an let's because I'm going to change this soon. Right, so what I do next is that I'm going to loop um, this is called cycle equals zero and cycle less than six cycle increment. So I'm going to loop six cycles and for each of them, I'm going to get um, I'm going to create a next active. Right, and then after we calculate it, active equals to next active. Right, and at the very end, hopefully what we see here is that um, I'm going to console out, out the active dot length or the size of the active. Right, getting the size of it uh which is how many active cells which will be the answer right so on this step what we're gonna do is that we're gonna um, loop through x min all the three dimensions so uh let x equals to x min x less than equals to x max x plus plus and i'm gonna do the same thing for y and z, right? So this is y and this is z. Oops, max, max, z. So we get x, y, z. And over here, we're going to see if um, active dot has, um, okay, I'm going to use key where uh, key is, x, y, and z. So if active has the key, this means that um, it is active currently. So if it's active currently and has two or three of its neighbor is active, then it remains active, right? So uh, I'm going to write this way. And neighbor active okay, count neighbor active x y z and active is equals to two or three right so probably we need this as a variable as well neighbor active also count so neighbor active is equals to um, 2 or equals to 3. Okay, um, then we need to set it as active, right? Uh, so there's another condition if active dot has key or does not have the key, then we're going to have another condition over here, which is only exactly three of it as active, we turn into active neighbor active equals to three only here next active dot set key uh or at key right so uh if it's only these two condition then it will be active uh next in the next cycle right um so this one actually active has then is this condition if it does not have is this condition so actually the same way of writing this um or this right yeah so if it's active then it based on this it will turn into active if it's not then it will based on this right so the next thing we need to fill it in is to count neighbor active so function counts neighbor active uh, active x y z um so we're going to go for all the dimensions. So let dx equals to negative 1, dx less equals to 1, dx. So we're going to go for negative 1, 0, 1 for each of the dimensions so that it gets like neighboring um, cell. Okay, so, uh, so this will be dy. And this is the Z. 
and if dx equals zero or and dy equals zero and dz equals zero then this is the current cell which we are not going to do anything so we're going to continue right so um so over here same thing we're going to have a variable called count and if active has x y z then count will increment lastly we return count right um i think that will be it so we we'll run through six cycles and we'll con console log the active size so we're going to run this oops sorry ah accidentally press on something and now it hangs um probably have to wait for a while so um okay i think it cancel um, over here is node run this okay um this is not set this is at okay run this zero and um, it's not right um let's see active next active active next okay so ah okay okay so um we loop through x y z um this one is actually dx plus dy and plus dz right and then uh i i need to do something else over here as well so uh if it's if it is active right which means that in the next cycle probably will need to count its neighbor as well uh, what that means is that probably we might need to expand the x min or x max um, accordingly right so x min will be math.min um, x min and the current x value minus one so current x is active then the neighbor will be counted right if it's not then now we don't really care about it right so we're going to do this for x min x max uh, plus one I'm going to do this for x and y and z. So this will be y, this will be z, this will be z, y, y. Okay, so save and run this again. 269. Um, I believe this will be the answer and let's see whether it is. Yes, that's the right answer. And let's move on to part two. <laughs> For some reasons, your simulated results don't match what, what the experimental energy source energy expected. Apparently, the pocket dimension actually has four spatial dimensions, not three. Okay, the pocket dimension contains a finite four dimensional grid. So now it's x, y, z, and w. Uh, single cube is a hypercube. Okay. So each cube not only considers its neighbors, so now has 80 other cubes there uh, because it's four dimension, right? Uh, same thing again, how it considers neighbors. Initial state of the pocket dimension still consists of a small flat region of cubes. For the more same rules of cycle updating still apply. Um, num consider the number of active neighbors. Of so the update condition is still the same. Right, it's just con considering more neighbors so for example consider the same initial states um this particular initial okay so it's uh simulating a few cycles will give you layer by layer right uh, so w actually looks like z as well right because um in the first layer is actually uh, z and w at zero index right um so after six cycles is this so let's see, um, I believe what we need to do here now is uh, duplicate some code over here that looks like uh, from Z to W. This will be zero as well. And this over here will have to loop one more where Z now is the W. I'm gonna add one more over here, W. 
uh, at over here that blue all this i think remains the same uh, zack now is replaced with w and over here we add w as well where over here i'm gonna have dw so another more condition over here and lastly over here w plus dw okay run slightly slower but we still get results 1380 will that be the correct answer we shall see yes that's the right answer and there you have it so day 17 of Evan of code 2020 if you like this video give me a thumbs up if you feel that anything i can improve on comment down below please i love comments i'll read every one of them and finally um this is week 17 which sorry day 17 which means day 18 is coming soon if you want to know when it's out uh please subscribe to my channel it will be over here okay here okay so that will be it and see you next time bye